Rob Sleemaker. I'm the founder of Bossa Incorporated. We've been uh, in business for 24 years now, so we're pretty pretty excited about that. And I'm really um, proud to have the privilege to know these gentlemen here, and uh, even more um, honored that they have used Vasa products over the years and uh, have used them and discovered ways to use them far beyond anything we ever imagined when we developed these products. And those are some of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to be asking them questions about how they use Vasa products to integrate into their programs for teaching swim technique, for uh, developing specific strength and power, and also when they've got an athlete that is injured, can't get into the water, but otherwise is healthy in the upper body and can still do conditioning, but how do they how do they meet that challenge using our products and other products? I don't want you to just talk about Vasa, but how do you integrate all of this together? Because I'm sure many of you coaches are wondering, you know, if you have our products, how do you use them most effectively? If you don't have our products, uh, but have a need, and maybe maybe this will show you how they can uh, benefit your program. So, again, welcome. I want to introduce the coaches on the panel. Uh, first up is Gary Hall Sr., here to my left. Uh, coach at the Race Club. I'm sure many of you people uh, know who he is, and his son, Gary Jr. Dick Schilberg, next, Germ famous coach from Germantown Academy. And I have to say a quick story about Dick. Dick was one of the three coaches who first discovered the Vasa trainer. This is in 1990, I think, or 89 or 90. We, and North Thornton, Dick Schulberg, and Richard Quick came up to our booth, and I knew nothing about the swim business or swim coaching business and didn't even know who they were. And they started jumping up and down, all excited about what the Vasa trainer was and what it, some of the things that it did. And, and, uh, of course, come to find out later when I was looking through the program, I found out who they were. So I got pretty excited once I found out who they were. So thanks, Dick, for all your support over the years. Matt Credit is next, University of Tennessee. And uh, Matt has um, developed some very interesting and valuable uh, technique DVDs. And uh, we're fortunate enough that he used the Vasa Trainer as a teaching prop in some of those DVDs. But I highly recommend his DVDs. If you haven't heard of them, check them out through Championship Productions. Andrei Vronsov, national team coach from Russia, and PhD physiologist, right? No? Uh, sports science. Yeah. Sports, sports science, yeah. yeah. And Jack Fabian from uh, Keene State College, and uh, father of Eva Fabian, open water swimmer champion. And Gennady Sokolavis, who worked with US PhD exercise physiologist, worked with USA Swimming for many, many years, has done just vast amounts of, of testing and quantifying what people are doing with swimming, and very innovative guy too. Lots of great ideas for both products and um, uh, you know, analyzing what people are doing in the water with their techniques. So, welcome. Thank you guys for coming. So, why don't we start with the, one of the first <coughs> questions that, that um, you know, comes to our mind. How have you been able to um, use the Vasa trainer or the Vasa ergometer for uh, <coughs> teaching technique, teaching form, or correcting technique problems? And it doesn't matter to me who wants to go first. We'll talk about that. We also have an athlete who can demonstrate for you if you need to. Matt, you want to sure. jump in on that one? Can we get the athlete? Sure. <laughs> Come on over, Joe. Do you want the forearm cups on you? Yeah, you can put that on. I think Matt should get on. <laughs> Jeff was a good demonstrator last time. Why don't some of you come in and sit on the yeah. floor? Yeah, come on. Come on. on. <coughs> get up here in the front. There's plenty of room. Plenty of room. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Is that okay to do yeah, this? Okay. Pull, pull yeah. I, I was a volunteer assistant in, in 1990 for, uh, for Richard Quick. When... Uh, he, he bought, I think, five or six Vasa trainers to put up on the um, on the pool deck at Stanford, and um, and I was just starting coaching, and so it, the machine has essentially been. I, I didn't realize that it was brand new, other than that I had never used it. But the machine was was really uh, has been a, a part of the the teaching that I've done for years, and uh, I'm not going to take too much time here, but I, I just want to show a simple exercise because. Um, 
the, the catch position, I think, in freestyle and butterfly breaststroke is, is one of the most difficult positions to teach in the water. There's some real s subtleties, obviously, in, in getting the fingertips to form, the shoulder, uh, the scap, all in the right place. And so to teach in the water can be very difficult. To teach it on land is, is easy when you have, uh, when you can communicate with the athlete and you can manipulate them, their, their arms and, and, uh, and body position. So what, just a very simple exercise we do is, is essentially create the catch position. And, and I, I asked, um, or Rob actually saw that we, we sort of, uh, made some, some cuffs to put on the forearm because I, I feel like that's where the, the center of pressure is. That's kind of, kind of where we want to balance the pressure through most of the stroke. And so why don't you go ahead and start moving through just some fly poles and do it really slowly. And, and, and this is basically what we're doing for the first several weeks of, uh, of training on land and go at about a quarter of that speed. What's your name? Charles. Charles, thank you. Really, no, that's too fast. Really, really slowly. Okay, and so we, we'll do this really slowly, and you, you essentially can't go slowly enough because at every point here, where he's, uh, Charles is creating some, some uh, muscle memory or neuromuscular connections, and, and with the machine, we can vary the resistance, we can, we can jack up the, uh, the height, we can add another band on the back, and at some point, he's going to start to fail. And that failure is going to look very familiar to all of you. He's going to go to a position that is stronger in this particular plane. Why don't you go ahead and simulate failure by dropping your elbows? Okay. Well, that's too much. You didn't feel that <laughs> right, right there. Okay. So, so here we can say, all right, Charles, ro rotate your fingertips downward, get that elbow forward more, okay, and continue. Okay. And and. However you want to teach it, you can have him, have him, uh, have him bring his, finger, his hands closer underneath. Um, we like to have him finish with their fingertips in the back. And you can see that when, when Charles dropped his elbows, the cuff slipped down to his wrist. So that's a, that's a sign that, uh, that we failed. Want the fingertips down here, elbows a little bit more in toward the back here. So we can do a lot of manipulation. And, and if he moves through it really slowly, again, every little position that he's going to be in is uh, he's creating a, a memory or creating a kind of a, a snapshot for his body and and we can do I think some really good coaching there um, so that this is one of the ways that we use it to teach and I, I want to just add to that again I mentioned about Matt's uh, DVDs but as you've already witnessed Matt's an excellent um, educator and can really create the, the mental images for what for what he wants the athletes to do. And, and when I watched the DVDs, I, I just thought they were outstanding. So as a follow-up to this talk, you can, you can look for those. Thanks, Charles. Thanks. Thanks. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I need you, buddy. Seriously. OK. okay. I'll need you, buddy. You want to back up the machine? You want yeah. to use the, the uh, handles or the cuffs? Use the handles. And straps, do they? Yeah, think a little harder. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have oh. a with him. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> I have nine of these, and someone had the audacity to call it lane nine. No, it's well, lane seven in Germany. <laughs> but but most people have eight lanes. So. Well, I already <laughs> have six. You don't rub it in. <laughs> no, um, I also have four ergs. Um, Norton and I fought who was going to get the first one back to our home base when we first saw it. The, the original one was a lot longer. More, more it was taller, taller off the ground. Yeah. Just a little bit different. But the same same concept. What well, made me mad, Matt, just to uh, Charlie, just come come back more. Now don't move, because I'm going to talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what made me upset was I copied the East German uh, incline boards. I had a friend of mine that would come and bring kids from France, and he had access to the East German. Um, 
the fitness room. And I said, take a picture. I'm really good mechanically. Uh, my trade is precision, um, precision uh, machinist, model maker. Um, that's my background. I have nothing to do with swimming. But I figure out ways and um, my background, I think, helps my swimmers from an attitude. How are you doing? <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> what we do, we have nine, but all nine of them are facing our sliding glass doors. So they actually can see, sort of, it's a mirror image. They can see what they're doing. So I uh, don't, please don't move. I like my athletes to go up the hill fairly fast, and I like my athletes to come down the hill really slow. That is the way I like to use the tool. Um, we, we do a whole bunch of exercises. If you walk into GA's pool at 6, 628, there's some form of fitness going on for the students who go to school there, and then they only swim from 6.30 to 7.40. So we don't do a lot of swimming. Um, we do 28 minutes, it could be VASA, it could be TRX. Um, I, I put these real high pull-up bars um, in the pool area above the dirt line on the building. And we have two TRXs, we put their hands, they put their feet in, I call it suspension training. And so they rotate through. Some days we'll go 28 minutes on VASA, 28 minutes on TRX, 28 minutes on the incline boards, we have nine spin bikes up in the balcony. So my, my room is sort of like a, a great area for kids to get stronger. Uh, the, the best way to overcome an earache, go ahead, pull that back. Now hold, no, 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 you went too far. Yeah, so Charlie comes in and he says, I have a real bad earache. I don't, I don't want you to swim. Go ahead, hold, hold that. Now I want you to hold that for 30 minutes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Guess what, the earache goes away. Right. Now, I, I want to show you something deeper that I think is really critical. I want you to put your feet up at that end. I want your head to come down at this end, and I want you to hold on to the strap. He said this guy's going to take a nap for three days when he's done with this. Yeah, good. We're going to get your feet inside. You're going to have to just go. Get your wrist, keep your knees up. Okay, now swim for stop. Muscle group work. I, 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 when I analyze my swimmers when they're racing, if their recovery starts to shorten up, they increase the number of stroke cycles per 25 yards or 50 meters, and they go slower. And if you don't work the recovery, don't stop. If you don't work, if you don't work the recovery muscle groups, maybe it might be four. I think it, it is. Um, one of the most important things we do with German down is working in covered muscle groups. Well, I'll chime in and say that, I, that we get reports. What do you mean? How old are you? 22. And what's your best friend? Freestyle. Oh, well, it's perfect. Spin freestyle is perfect for you. <laughs> How many days is it going to take him to oh, yeah. recover when you've done it? <laughs> I, I, I wanted to interject this because it's something that um, uh, I don't think. Uh, how was that? <laughs> how was that? How was that? <laughs> I don't think we do enough work. And I, I, I'm not one of these scientist guys over here, but I'm glad we have them. I, I, I just. I'm just basic. But 
I think you have to work to recover muscle groups. And I think this machine is the best way. You can make it lower. I'm just going to take it easy. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can make it lower. But here's the beauty of this machine. You just, boom, click, bang, drop the incline. You can click, bang, raise the incline. You can add more tubing. You can add bits. tubing. You can have, there's so many different things you can do. I don't work for them. I just own nine of these and four of those. And, and I recycle, I cycle my kids through every day on some, every day there's 28 minutes of fitness in the morning. And then in the afternoon we do 45 minutes. And it, and it varies. It's not the same exercise every day. So, but I, I wanted to show you the recovery muscle group work because I think it's really good, the best one. I, I've been at some of your practices and it, it's like a beehive. It's so busy. These athletes going around doing so many different things. It's great. Great use of your space. Sure. Gary? Uh, we, just so you know, I've been a fan of Vaza. We started in 96, I think, when Mike Bottom first started coming down to Phoenix and coached the Phoenix Swim Club in the summertime. Um, and we continued to use them, and then I think in 2008 we, we uh, got the on and started using that. But uh, the one thing I wanted to say in relation to technique is uh, the more I, I, I haven't, I've been in this sport for 50 plus years, but I've only been coaching for five, so for six. I'm a newcomer. Uh, but I think I've learned more about the sport swimming by being a coach than I ever was as a swimmer or administrator. It really makes you think about what you tell your swimmers. Um, you hope you get it right most of the time, but and, and I think we've all observed that, you know, except maybe in the 50 where you still see some swimmers excel with a deep pull. Everybody's gone to a really high elbow, which wasn't taught when I was swimming, and, and it was very different. But um, when you look at the, the anatomy and the physiology of pulling and the difference between pulling here and here, it's really very different. And it, and it involves very different muscles. And, and I'm convinced that the muscles uh, that need to get strong, we don't usually get strong, and we need to get them stronger, particularly on the scapula. Those are the muscles that are really involved in this, this motion. This is not, in my opinion, there's a lot of people have different theories about why this is better. My belief, it's, it's not about power. You have a, a conflict going on between the, the forces that power us through the water, that speed us up and those that slow us down, the drag forces. But swimming is, is, is very unique in that the, the water is 800 times denser than air, so all the physical laws that apply are coming in, into play at very low speeds. And in swimming, the drag forces end up really uh, being more important in the long run than the power forces, especially at higher speeds of world-class swimmers. Um, so what I love about the Vaz is it helps us teach this, I believe this position is a position of least drag, not the position of most power. And this position here, when you look at what you're doing when you're recovering here, and you've got this elbow up here, you're in, in a negative position. You're trying to keep this elbow at the top. You're extending your shoulders back. And that's not a position of power. That's the way it initiates as you rotate through. <coughs> the angle goes from negative and eventually neutral and positive as you rotate around. But getting that muscle group back in here strong is and teaching swimmers to not just swim um, in the position of power, but in the position that's going to enable them to go the fastest is, is very important. I think the Vaz is the best way to do that. And the longer I'm around strength training, the more I realize that it's a, it's a mixed blessing. We, we, we now, I think, have come to the belief, or at least I have, that swim-specific strength is key. The bigger you get, the more penalty you're going to pay because the human body in water is exquisitely sensitive to, to drag coefficient. It's a little bulkier, it's a lot harder to pull that body through the water. So we, we really enjoy using the weak press. <laughs>